Hi, I'm Richard Schwartz, the president of AI Medical Devices. This is going to be a brief educational video demonstrating the use of the video rifle. This is the video rifle scope. It is a stylet video scope that functions by articulation of the stylet utilizing a video screen. You may notice there is no on off switch. The on switch for the device is a simple turn of the battery cover and you'll have an image come on the screen. Now the device has a number of features. One, it has an RCA out port here so if you wish to view on an external monitor you simply plug in a composite video cable here and you can view this on an external monitor. To intubate using the video rifle you first take an appropriate sized endotracheal tube. You will need to lubricate the stylet using either a silicone based or water based lubricant. Simply apply a few drops of the lubricant on the working length. Insert it, insert the endotracheal tube Make sure that it's well lubricated. Gently seat the endotracheal tube into the tube stop, making sure that it's not too tight that you can release it. Then turn your scope on and you'll set the tip of the stylet just inside of the endotracheal tube. Now to intubate using the video rifle, what you'll need to do is initially providers should use either the rifle blade guide or a standard laryngoscope to elevate the tongue to make visualizing the epiglottis easier. And I'll demonstrate that here on this mannequin. As you become more advanced using the device, you may want to use the device as a standalone using a chin lift. Uh, chin tongue lift, and I'll demonstrate that later. The rifle blade is made with an integrated channel that allows you to pass the scope and endotracheal tube easily. What you do is you place the rifle blade guide into the patient's mouth midline, similar to how you would place a standard laryngoscope. Then what you will do is take your video rifle and you will follow the channel generated by the rifle blade guide. As you can see, there is the epiglottis. Now I'm going to gently relax the handle, slip under the epiglottis, and I visualize my vocal cords. Now what I will do is gently rock the scope back through the vocal cords relax the handle and advance the tube. At this point I can clearly see that I've that I've passed through the vocal cords. As you can see you're uh, able to see the arytenoids and cords. I'll remove the scope, then remove the rifle blade guide and verify placement in the usual fashion. One of the unique aspects of the video rifle is its versatility in airway management. One unique method for intubation with the video rifle is through a laryngeal mask. This can be utilized through a number of different supraglottic devices or laryngeal mask. I'm using the FlexiCare uh, laryngeal mask here. Um, this technique works equally well with this, the Portex uh, laryngeal mask. The laryngeal mask would be placed in the usual fashion with the exception that the interior, uh, the, uh, interior of the supraglottic device must be well lubricated. The video rifle endotracheal tube is then inserted through the supraglottic device and slowly advanced. When you reach the bowl of the supraglottic device, the handle is gently depressed to appropriately align the device 
through the vocal cords. The endotracheal tube can then be advanced through the vocal cords and the patient is intubated. The video rifle is then removed, the cuff on the endotracheal tube uh, inflated, and the patient ventilated. As you become more proficient utilizing the video rifle, you may want to use the video rifle as a standalone device. In order to do that, you need to become proficient at doing an adequate tongue chin lift. In order to do this procedure, what you will do is place your hand in the patient's mouth with your thumb and grasp the mandible and gently lift the mandible. What this does is lift the epiglottis from the posterior oropharynx. The video rifle is then placed in the patient's mouth and the uvula is identified. The handle is then gently squeezed to identify the epiglottis. The device is advanced to the epiglottis and squeezed, identifying the retinoid cartilages and the vocal cords. The device is advanced through the vocal cords and the endotracheal tube is advanced and the patient is intubated. Now I'm going to briefly go over some of the components of the video rifle. We have a rigid component of the working length. We have an articulating section and then a short rigid component and the camera and integrated LEDs at the very tip. When you squeeze the lever, the articulation section will bend approximately to 130 degrees. Additionally, we have our tube stop with adjustment screw. And we have our battery cover and on-off switch. The on-off switch is activated by turning the cap in a clockwise motion, and it is turned off by turning it in a counterclockwise motion. We have an RCA port out, which is compatible with a composite video cable. We have our set screw that secures the working length in place, and we have our soap cap. To remove the working length, you simply unscrew the set screw until it will not uh, um, back out any further, press it, and the working length will become loose and it is removed. A dirty working length is then placed separate from the handle and the soap cap is removed. The soap cap is then placed onto the working length and the working length is then washed with soap and water and is sent to cleaning for high level disinfection. To replace the working length onto the handle, the opposite steps are followed. The soap cap is then removed with a clean working length. It is placed on the handle. The working length is then placed into the handle and pushed until it clicks into place. The retaining screw is then tightened to a finger tight level. The working length is now replaced. After use, the handle of the video rifle should be wiped down with a topical disinfectant wipe as well. To remove the and replace the batteries of the video rifle, the battery cap is turned in a counterclockwise motion. The batteries are removed and new batteries are replaced with the polarity as indicated on the back of the battery container. The battery cap is then replaced.
and the scope is back uh, ready for use. Additionally, you will notice that there is a low battery indicator in this corner of the screen. This light will come on and glow red when there is approximately 30 minutes of usable battery life remaining for the scope. If you see this light come on, you may continue to intubate with your current case, but realize that you should replace the batteries as soon as possible once this light comes on. Thank you very much.